Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. Today is a training day for the uh, class. This is their first Mason class of the semester. It's a new class that I'm working with today at Hope Builders in Santa Ana, California. Completely nonprofit uh, uh, organization that uh, helps youth um, learn how to do construction work. They do a little electric, plumbing, framing, and masonry. And I'm taking care of the masonry part of it. So they built these boxes and that was part of their framing experience. But there's going to be a lot more to it besides just building these boxes. And they, did, they tied up some rebar. Ideally you'd want those um, up on dobies and poured in place. But we like to just to lift them up and drop them in as we poured them. The concrete mix that we used was just some bag mix, 90 pounders. And what we did, because we, I did this multiple occasions, pouring indoors on cold uh, concrete floor. It takes a long time to dry. So I added calcium chloride, which is an accelerant to make it dry a little quicker. And I added, for every three 90 pound bags, I added a cup and a half calcium chloride, also known as CC. It's not an ideal accelerant, especially when you have steel in the concrete because it does uh, affect the steel. So they have some uh, different, um, you know, accelerants that will not affect your steel like polar set and stuff like there's some other ones out there too but uh, typically you won't be able to use this type of uh, accelerator when there's steel in the concrete also I added fiber mesh we added about oh, a small handful for every uh, load that we mixed We put it in here pretty stiff because we wanted to be able to finish up, mix everything, get it all in here, and wrap it up. We wanted to try to get out of here by noon, at, um, right after lunch, was the idea. And we started at 7 a.m. So we can see that we broadcasted some color hardener on here. On a couple of them, we have a, a couple different colors. We have a a smoky blue and we also have a um, terracotta right here I'm showing uh, one of the students is uh, the ed edging procedure and how to hold the edger without rolling the edges and making the edges dip down below the um, form We're using wood hand floats, 12 inch, 3 inch wide. We're using edgers that have a half inch radius on them. This is our initial lay down, just hand floating and edging. And then we'll just let it set. While it's setting, what we're going to do next is we're going to build a little bit of a block wall here, right down the middle of all these pads, stepping stones. We're going to set a little block wall up while it's curing out and the way we're going to do that because we don't want to use a regular mortar mix with cement in it because we want to be able to disassemble this block relatively easy and reuse the block potentially for the next class so what we're using is just some sand and lime and apparently I guess that's what they use to build the py pyramids is uh, lime and sand because they didn't have cement at that time. But they had plenty of limestone. And it seemed to hold up pretty well over the years. Now laying the block and doing concrete takes a lot of practice to get the uh, mortar on the top of the block without making a mess on the side of the block.
now what they're doing is plumbing up this is what you would do if you're building the leads on each end of a wall you would plumb up and get a probably whatever height you want to go to you get your two ends built at full height and then you can just start pulling your lines from each course across from end to end and fill in the middle and then you wouldn't have to plumb anymore because your two ends are already plumb so your leads take the most time to build on a block wall when then you just start throwing fill in the middle and you can just throw away the level at that point because you have a line that's coming off a couple plumb ends here we are stamping the concrete we threw a little antique release and it acts serves as two purposes it, it acts as a release for the uh, mat the texture mat so that they don't stick to the concrete and it also gives a little um, color to it so you have a two-tone effect like in this case we're using a dark gray release and uh, when it gets rinsed probably 30 percent you can it varies you can leave as much as that antique release as you'd like before you put the sealer on it but typically you probably knock off about oh 60 percent of the antique release then you ex you expose that uh, base color that's in the concrete so the antique release just stays in the crevices and creases of the texture The way, you, the way you'd rinse that is either with a pressure washer um, or you can use a broom and a water hose or you can use a little muriatic acid diluted about 10 to 1. Um, all those systems will knock off the release. And you, do, you wait about two days to do that because if you rinse early, most of the release will come off. You'll probably lose about a good 80% but if the, if you want to get rid of a lot of the release then rinse early it comes off a lot easier there is some pounders that you can use to drive these mats in but these areas are so small we're just going to pat them in by hand and what we're doing um, so the mats don't drift while we're pounding them one hand stabilizes the mat and then the other hand pounds it so that way the mats not bouncing around also we did a little top cast this recessed one here happens to have top cast on it so that okay. That wraps it up. We just did the concrete. We set a few blocks. Picked some concrete up. We did some stamp. We did some integral color. A little bit of everything here. And then I'm going to roll it up now. They're going to rinse this uh, maybe tomorrow or the next day, but I won't be here for that, unfortunately. Anyway, nice talk, David. Always a pleasure. Thank you. And these guys have something for you. All right. It's in the spirit of what class 60? Oh, yeah. <laughs>